Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, recently in my Discord, something called Wirehole was brought to my attention, and I wanted to just take a few minutes to kind of walk you through the process of getting it set up. Actually, a couple of different ways. Uh, one for just kind of a, a quick and dirty setup, uh, and then the other would be more kind of a customized setup uh, for more than one user. The quick and dirty way is definitely uh, more geared towards one user, whereas we'll customize that later on in the video and set it up for multiple users. So as it says on their GitHub page here, uh, Wirehole is a combination of WireGuard, PyHole, and Unbound in a Docker Compose project with the intent of enabling users to quickly and easily create and deploy a personally managed full or split tunnel WireGuard VPN with ad blocking capabilities and DNS caching with additional privacy options. So most of the time, in fact, almost always when we're talking about self-hosting on Docker and that sort of thing on this channel, we're doing it on hardware that we have in our possession. This time though, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit and actually deploy it on DigitalOcean. And the reason I'm doing that is kind of a couple of different reasons. One is because I'll be showing IP addresses, that sort of thing, and I don't really want to expose my home's IP address if I can help it. The other reason is sometimes it's good to have certain things hosted off site just for convenience or backups or things like that. So I thought maybe showing how to uh, install this on a third party provider like DigitalOcean uh, might be of some benefit to some of the viewers as well. So DigitalOcean has no part of this video. They're not sponsoring it. They're not providing me anything for free. There's no, there, there's, they have no say in this. There's no sponsorship. There's nothing like that. Uh, I'm just using them because I've used them in the past. Uh, I will have an affiliate link in the description uh, if you want to check them out using my link. That'd be cool, but, um, but there's no sponsorship or anything like that going on in this video. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, click on uh, get started uh, by creating a droplet. I'm going to uh, choose Ubuntu. I'm gonna use their basic plan. I'm gonna use an Intel uh, with SSD. I'm gonna choose their cheapest package right here because we don't really need much for this as far as horsepower is concerned. I'm gonna choose a data center near me. And uh, then I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to use a password. Now look, I understand that an SSH key would be uh, more secure here and feel free to modify this with that if you choose to. For the sake of this tutorial though, I'm going to use a password. Uh, then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna give this a host name. Uh, this is going to be DigitalOcean Wirehole Tutorial. And then we can go ahead and scroll down, click on create the droplet. And then once this is done, uh, we should see an IP address and we know that we can jump in via SSH and start the install process. Okay, so there we go. There is the IP address that we've been assigned by DigitalOcean. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that uh, in my little notepad off screen here. And then what I'm gonna do is scroll up or bring bring my, my PowerShell up here or my, uh, my Windows thing here. And I'm gonna do SSH uh, root at uh, IP address go. Uh, yes, I, I wanna connect to that, that is fine. Uh, so then what I'm gonna do is copy my password from down here, like so. And uh, now we're logged in and good to go. So uh, first thing we wanna do is uh, take note uh, that there is no Docker installed here. Uh, this is a fresh, fresh, fresh install. So what I'm gonna do is uh, first thing is uh, actually create, uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do nano and I'll do setup.sh like so. We're gonna create a bash script uh, that I'm just gonna copy and paste from over here on GitHub, which will just be uh, right here. And, so, and we'll go ahead, we'll copy this and then we'll jump into it and take a look and see what it does. <clears throat> so basically from the start here, we can see that we're gonna do an apt get update and then an apt get install and then answer yes, do everything quietly. Uh, curl get apt transport CA certificates, uh, new GP agent and software properties common. Once that's done, then we're going to uh, go ahead and install the repositories and keys uh, for uh, Docker. And then we're going to go ahead and do a sudo apt get uh, a repository. And then we're gonna install Docker uh, and uh, Docker CE uh, command line. After that, we're going to install Docker Compose. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and clone uh, this uh, GitHub repository, change into it, and then run the Docker Compose.yml uh, file. So that's how we're gonna do it quick and dirty. So uh, I just wanted to show that that's what that looks like. So we'll do a Control O to save and Control X to exit. And then the next thing we wanna do is actually a chmod uh, plus X to execute uh, setup.sh. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so now I can do dot slash uh, setup.sh and press return. And then it's gonna go through this process of, of kind of going through all of those commands that I showed uh, on that previous screen uh, with uh, the app get update and all of that sort of thing. And then here in just a moment, it's gonna ask, hey, are you sure this is what you wanna do? Yep, 
press enter, and then it'll go ahead and finish up this process. Okay, so it's gone ahead and deployed all of those containers that we need, and even went so far as to generate a QR code that we can then scan with our cell phone or tablet or whatever the case may be here. So now that we've got our uh, VPN set up with uh, WireGuard and uh, PyHole and Unbound, uh, let's actually uh, connect to this via our desktop application. So in order to do that, we'll actually have to kind of FTP into the server. I'm gonna use WinSCP. We're gonna get in there and we're gonna grab some files uh, and then we will connect to the server via our desktop here. So I'll open this up and I'll type in WinSCP. And then we'll go ahead and connect here. I'm actually gonna put in the password first because I had that uh, already copied. I'm gonna do that and then root. Okay, so now that we're logged in, we can come in here and we can see that there is Snap and there's Wirehole. We're gonna go into Wirehole, and then we're gonna go into uh, WireGuard. And then right here, you can see that we have uh, one peer set up in here. In fact, we can see that I've got a, a peer from a video that I did earlier that I didn't like. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, drag peer one over like so. And then <clears throat> I can come over here to my start and type in, or just go to WireGuard right here, is come over to here. Uh, you know what, let's actually go over here to Edge. Oops. And let's see if I can load Social Blade. I can't. So this is one of the problems that you may run into when you uh, set up your server, is that uh, services like Cloudflare, their job is to protect other websites from, from bad actors on the internet. And unfortunately, IP addresses get uh, recycled a lot. And so you may end up with an IP address that has been uh, blocked or, or uh, identified as spammy uh, by one of these services that may end up blocking you from accessing one of these websites. Now. That said, you may be able to change some things up and, and make some changes to your settings uh, depending on which is more important for you, whether it's ad blocking or uh, IP anonymity. And we'll talk about that uh, in one of the settings here in just a moment. So while we're here, let's actually do uh, something else. Let's go to add, uh, add test blocker or ad block tester. Man, there we go. So uh, this just kind of gives us a rough idea of uh, what kind of ads uh, we pass and fail as far as blocking is concerned. Now, um, banner ads as far as like flash banners, that test is gonna fail because we're not doing flash anymore. Um, GIF images or GIF, however, static images, depending on where they are being hosted from, uh, whether or not that, um, that hosting URL uh, or domain name has been identified as an ad-based uh, URL, that sort of thing. Um, so there are some things in here uh, that are working, some that aren't working. So uh, what you can do in that case uh, is actually just like it says over here on the instructions. If we scroll down just a little bit, let's grab, let's copy that URL. We'll come back over to here. We'll paste that in. And here we are. This is our personal private pie hole that we're only able to access when we're attached to the VPN uh, on our server, whether it's hosted locally or remotely. So you could then at this point go in and modify your blacklists or your, your block lists or any of those types of things to really fine tune what you want to block and what you don't that would only affect you and those who are on your VPN. Now, a minute ago, I, I had mentioned trading uh, anonymity as far as your IP is concerned versus ad blocking. And sometimes you may may have to make a decision as far as which of those is more important to you. Again, we ran into an issue trying to access Social Blade um, because of uh, Cloudflare. Now, if I go over here to IP Chicken and give this a second to load, Right there is the IP address that I was given by DigitalOcean. So this is why uh, I was blocked is because this IP has probably been reported as a spam IP. So if I'm more concerned about ads than I am my IP anonymity, what I can do is come over here to WireGuard. I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate this and then I'm gonna click edit. And what I wanna do, and I apologize, I don't know if I can, I will try to make this bigger in post. Um, <clears throat> Basically, where it says allowed IPs right here, we're gonna need to change that. Uh, and we're gonna come back over to the instructions here, like it says, and we're gonna change allowed IPs to 10.2.0.0 slash 24, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to paste this in here, just like that. And I'll click save, and I'll click activate. So now let's come back over, let's minimize this. Um, and then let's come back over here and refresh. 
And now all of a sudden we can access Social Blade. And you'll notice though, there are still no ads on this page because Pi-hole is doing what it's supposed to do. Now, if we come back over here, I'm probably gonna have to blur this in post, but if I refresh that, that is my home IP address. So I, I traded anonymity for ad blocking on a site that wouldn't let me do otherwise. So uh, that's just one of those trade-offs you may have to make, whether you're using a desktop or a mobile uh, version of this, just something to keep in mind as far as uh, that split tunnel DNS is concerned. Now, even when we've got this, we can still uh, go to 10.2.0.100 admin and log into Pi-hole. So that doesn't change. Uh, just your IP anonymity does based on whether or not you're using a split tunnel or not. Okay, so now that we've seen how the quick and dirty thing works as far as getting a quick setup done, let's actually go in and modify that script a little bit, uh, as well as the Docker Compose file, so that we can get a more custom solution for what we're trying to achieve here. So here we are on the GitHub page again. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll find that full setup script uh, that we used before. And basically what we're gonna do uh, is just come back over here and right here we can see that setup.sh is right there. Um, so basically what we can do is nano uh, setup.sh, and then we can kind of come in here and take a look. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually come down uh, to right here and we're not going to do Docker Compose up. So we don't need to CD into a uh, wire hole. Uh, so everything after right there can just go away. So I'm gonna do control O to save and then control X to come back to here. And then I would just do a dot slash setup.sh and hit enter. And then it's gonna go through this process of making sure everything is still up to date, uh, making sure that everything that we need is installed with all of its prerequisites. And then it's gonna go ahead and clone the repository for us. And then we're gonna press enter to move on to the next step there. But uh, then once that's done, uh, then we can uh, go in and actually modify the docker compose.yml file uh, to really customize uh, this setup for uh, how we want it. So here we go. So next I will do an ls and I'll do a cd into wirehole and then I'll do nano docker compose.yml. So here we can see that we've, we're gonna have a private network. Uh, we're going to have unbound up here at the top uh, as our first container, then we're gonna have wire guard. Uh, below that, we've got a time zone here and you can change this if you want. I don't know that it really matters all that much, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change it. Uh, below that, we've got a server port. Uh, after that, we've got a server URL. Now, if you've got uh, a, a my DNA, or sorry, a DDNS account, you could put that here and uh, have uh, an, an, a URL versus an IP address here. Uh, but below that, we've got this next line that says peers. We're gonna change that to three instead of just one. So maybe you want three of your friends to join your network or whatever. Uh, so we'll go ahead and scroll down uh, a little further. And then Right here, again, I wanna change Los Angeles to Denver. And then I think that was actually everything that we needed to do in there. So we can do Control O and Enter and Control X to save and close. And then we can do Docker, oops, um, Compose Up and press Enter. Now it's gonna go ahead and create uh, these three new containers. And here we can see that it's actually generating some stuff here. So let's scroll back up. Uh, right here, uh, we've got peer code number three. Uh, so, sorry, peer QR code number three. Uh, so you could send that to a friend uh, or have your friend scan it or you could scan it, however you wanted to do that. Same thing with number two, same thing with number one there. Now, sometimes you may notice like QR code number one here looks fine, but if we scroll down, uh, there's a little bit of wonkiness kind of right in the middle uh, of this one. And we've got this little uh, pixel that's out of place there. Uh, if we scroll down, we've got the same thing going on down here. Uh, this is one of those cases where a QR code might not work because it's glitched out for some reason. And in that case, what you can do uh, is actually go over to your WinSCP. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up again. And I'm going to do this, uh, I'm gonna type in root and then I'll put in my IP address. Actually, let me grab it from here. Go ahead and paste that in there. Oops, cancel, just log in. And then you can come into here, go into uh, WireGuard, 
So once you're in here, you could then download these and email them to your friends, or maybe email is not the best way to do that. Securely send them, maybe use Pwn Drop or something like that to send them their configuration files that they can then upload to, uh, whether it's their laptop or their, their mobile phone or whatever the case is. Uh, this would be an easy way to get everybody the files they need and give everybody access to this as well. And just to show again that this is still working, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag over peer number two, uh, like so, and then uh, I'll open WireGuard and we'll import from uh, there and then we'll go to desktop and we'll go to peer two. Peer two config, activate. Uh, I lost my connection there, that is absolutely fine. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close or minimize this and I'll open this back up. Uh, I'm gonna refresh. Again, we're broken. Um, our ad block tester, still everything here looks the same. Pi-hole, again, uh, we're able to connect here. Our, our number reset because we deployed a new version of this, so it didn't maintain any of that data. I had already deleted it. Uh, and if we come back over uh, to IP chicken here and refresh, Well, it looks like they are uh, blocking my uh, connection here as well. Uh, possibly, let's see, let's just look at my IP. Right there, that worked. So sometimes you just gotta do that. And here we can see that again, that is the DigitalOcean uh, IP address that was assigned to me for this particular project. So hopefully uh, this was an, a good explanation, kind of helped you understand uh, how you can set up your own private uh, VPN like this so that you can, um, protect yourself online with via anonymity of your IP address, uh, via hosting via a third party, uh but whether you host it locally or remotely, this gives you the option to have ad blocking on the go. So one of the other possible uses that I haven't fully tested yet is actually having a, a virtual LAN, uh, like I showed in Tailscale, if you saw that video, um, it's, it may be possible to actually connect devices uh, together over shared folders, uh, command lines, things like that on this network. If we take a look, uh, we can see the IP address of this particular device. It looks like it's 10.6.0.3. Uh, on my phone, it's 10.6.0.2. And I was able to ping them back and forth. Uh, so they were able to communicate. So it's entirely possible that you could actually use this as a private network to share files possibly or, or just communicate devices between each other uh, for, for a kind of your own private uh, virtual LAN, so to speak. So, hey, um, this is the editing version of me and the headphones, the headphones give it away. Uh, so while I was waiting for uh, files to transfer from my camera's SD card over to my computer, I actually installed WireGuard on my Manjaro laptop and uh, got uh, OpenSSH server set up on there and whatnot. And I was actually able to communicate uh, from my desktop to my laptop and reboot it via command line uh, while connected only over the uh, the, the WireGuard network. So uh, I can't actually verify that that works. If you're interested in me showing that in more detail in another video, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. But let's jump back over to old version of me to wrap up this video. So uh, I know I covered a lot in this video and hopefully it made sense. I'm gonna try to do my best in post to make sure that it does. Uh, if, it if it does or if it doesn't, either way, let me know in the comment section down below. If you've got any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer any of those to the best of my ability. Again, I did use DigitalOcean for this video, but uh, they are in no way associated with it other than being a provider. Uh, they didn't sponsor this. They didn't provide me anything. They don't know I'm doing it. However, I do have an affiliate code in the description. If you wanna go check them out, I may make a little bit of money. I'm not even sure uh, what their affiliate thing is, but I've got one. So go ahead and check that out and uh, let me know how it worked out for you again in the comments. Uh, all of the instructions for this will be available in the description down below. And there will be some ways down there you can help support the channel, uh, whether it's through that link or through uh, Patreon or channel memberships or whatever the case may be. Uh, the choice is yours if you want to make that choice. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.